All right, you are rolling on all fronts, so feel free to go whenever you're ready. All right, here we go. All right. Hey, everybody, welcome to this month's Metal Misconduct. It's a high-tech month for us, so uh, it's going to sound really good for the first time. It does sound right? really good. Uh, anyway, I'm Brian Slagle from Metal Blade Records, and I'll, as always, Sean Work from NHL.com. How are you, Sean? This is awesome, dude. This is the first time, I think, since the beginning when I went out to your offices that we've been face-to-face -to, -face to do we, this. We did it a couple times at the NHL offices as oh, well. Oh, that's right. That's right. And we did uh, the one in Vegas during all, uh, awards. That's right. Correct. So there's a few But times. there's been a few, but... It's good to be face to face, I, man. I know. I'm not. Well, I'm not sure about I, that, about me. I don't know, but it's good yeah, to be face to face right, with well, you. Right, thanks. And <laughs> with our guests, I mean, this is the best. Yes, and uh, we have an amazing <laughs> guest this month. He is a I don't know what I am. Grammy nominated musician. Well, who's been in one of the biggest heavy metal bands of all time, very playing the bass guitar, occasionally. A Miss base god, I believe. I, yeah, I would, I would go so far to say that. Uh, Mr. Frank Bello from Anthrax. Well, well, thank you for the big introduction. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm good, Brian. How are you, man? I am good. It's I cool, good. man. I'm loving it here. In, I'm in the village here, man. I love this. This building to begin with is old school New York. Nice. I miss this because all the yuppies came in and bought up everything here. They scrapped out New York, and now seeing an old building building like this makes me feel really good. It's too nice now, New York, kinda. It's not even. It's it's safe. Yeah, blah blah blah. I get it, but <laughs> they they took out the character. Pretty much the soul of New York has been given away and wow. bought. Well, it's actually been bought. But yeah. okay, I'll get away with that. Nice, nice. So we all know Frank, and yeah. he's. A huge, amazing, <laughs> phenomenal bass player and a big sports fan, of course, yeah. which is why you're here. I'm too passionate with this stupidity. So my fir my first question is a y Yankee fan, right? I'm a Yankee fan, but let's let's get deep into that if you want. Um, here's the, I'm I'm jaded. I I don't even care that they're not winning. I could give a damn. I just baseball, dude. Look at baseball. How pathetic. Let's just go off on that for a second. Yes, please. It's, I can't afford. Well, I can afford, but I'm not rich. I'm not a rich rock star. I'm not. I'm not in Metallica. The truth is, I can't afford to bring my kid for a four hundred dollar game. Uh, oh yeah, in, in New York, in you're, New yeah, York, dude, Yankees are the worst. I mean, I you know what's crazy about Yankee Stadium now, Brian? I've played Yankee Stadium, the new Yankee Stadium. Well, and I was you're gonna spoil it because that was oh, really sorry. my first question was yeah. being a fan yeah. and going to games. I'm sure as you grew up, what was it like to actually play Yankee Stadium for you? It was growing up ten minutes from the stadium. Um, you can imagine it was insane because you know. I mean, I went there. We just took we took a bus there. We took a train there all the time. I was at, when you could afford to go to a game. Uh, you <laughs> could, well, you just, we just went there. We hung out in the bleachers. We get the cheap ten dollar five five dollar seats, and we got to move everywhere. I caught foul balls everywhere. It was just the best atmosphere. Going forward, uh, when they tore down the stadium, and they they built this um, monstrosity. Oh. I call it. And look, I'm a Yankee fan saying this. This is truth. Most Yankee fans say that, actually. I just, I, I've played this Yankee stadium. Um, I've never been to a game. Really? Wow. Not one game. Here's why. It's principle. I've been offered free seats, and it's just beautiful. It's nice. All I will not do it. Not, not yet, man. It's just like, I look, at, I look what's going on. They've outpriced the blue-collar guy. Yeah. And that really pisses. That was me. That's still me, man. I'm, I'll die a blue-collar guy. And I see all these rich. Can I curse on this? Abs uh, yeah, sure. Okay, absolutely. Sure. <laughs> absolutely. Surely. <laughs> surely. Well, uh, yeah, most uh, uh, the podcast doesn't matter, but uh, a couple of the radio stations run it. But okay, screw they, them. Well, the truth <laughs> is, they these rich people. You can say assholes. That's oh, fine. assholes. That's great. Yeah, that's oh, great. I'll put assholes, and you can put in whatever you no, want. No, assholes is fine. Oh, the, all these rich assholes in those seats that you see are vacant. That really, those cushy seats that you see when you see a guy off from third base and stuff, it really drives me crazy. That, that could be me and my son. But for principle, I won't give them that $175, $200. I won't do it. It just pisses me off. And then you look at the horrible team they put out there. It's hilarious. It's a joke. And then you pay $40 to $50 to park a car. Are you kidding me? I'm not going. And I'm done. I'm done with it, man. Wow, that's insane. I'm really, I'm really annoyed with the whole so system. So then being there and playing there was really like, eh, who cares? No, being there and playing there, because that's the location of everything. Of course. It was what every, everything that I loved was there that day. It was, it was bigger than life. For, let's face it, man. We got to play Yankee, Yankee uh, New, York, New York band Anthrax got to play Yankee Stadium. I can't even tell you that day going there, I was, I was on a cloud. And you probably heard the story of me trying to get on that field and all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. 
and I almost got arrested. That's fine. But I think I should have done it. I think I should have dove into third base. I think I should have gotten arrested, but I don't think I would have played that show then because I think they, that guy was serious about telling me he was going to put me in jail. Really? I don't know about that. but If well. I would have dove into third, the, the gate was there. If yep. I would have dove into third base, the guy looked, he was big and he was serious. <laughs> so, I'm not even kidding. He, wanted, he, was, he, was, not, he was not playing with me. So uh, I digress. Go. I'm sorry. But that, but that show was old Yankee Stadium in the new building. It was a yeah. blue-collar show. For I mean, me. the, the thing that amazes me the most, and I grew up a Red Sox fan. I've lived here for 20 years now. I I'm still, sorry. That's okay. No, I, still have no, <laughs> I still have no love for the Yankees, but the thing that amazed me was Derek Jeter, who is, yeah. is the guy here, who has Absolutely. been forever. Whether he's overrated or not, we won't get into it that conversation. Matter, yeah. He's their guy. It's he's cool their to guy. have that nowadays, right? Yeah, and... He comes to the end, the last game, sold out. The days leading up to that, mm. not sold out. Like, that's when Agreed. I had always said, look, I think they're doing a little something wrong here on the business side. Mm -hmm. But when you couldn't fill that building for the Derek Jeter going away tour, totally like, agree. now, like, you got to look at it. And maybe they don't care. Maybe it's all TV they money, Dude, but it's a, it's a horrible optic. Absolutely. And you saw it. And you know, I can't imagine a Red Sox fan seeing this, and I understand it because look, I think over the years I've re I've come to respect the Red Sox fan. I do. I get it. I totally understand it. But my thing was now I saw that, but I thought it was very cool of Derek Jeter to play, still play, and go to Red Sox and tip his hat to them. I thought yep. that was really a really nice statement from him. Well, That's why would he not play? Because you know, if he was a prima donna, which he's not, he he could say no. I want to finish at Yankee Stadium, right? He didn't have. I'm just saying, today's base. Look, dude, today's baseball guy. Come on, you know the deal. I want, I want that. God, I want the old baseball, old baseball player back. I want that gritty baseball back. I miss it. It's like, oh, I have a hangnail. I'm out for two weeks. Stop. Yeah, I know. W where's the game? Where's the game, man? Well, this is this is the. I mean, yeah, this is the problem that's happening with football too. Yeah. They don't <laughs> go. They're going down the same road. Baseball was the national pastime, Absolutely. the number one sport in this country. Mm -hmm. And between the strikes and the steroids and everything else, it's tumbled down to number three behind the NBA and the NFL. Yep. And the NFL is dangling on that very edge, that if they make a couple more wrong moves, they're going to start. Tw dingling down as well. well if they keep making these rules by, by game by game they keep making these rules like you're not allowed to touch this guy you know what you know what let's play the game let the game be it, it, it's a great game you're ruining it all these stupid new rules you keep coming it feels like every other week they have a new rule that's killing us i'm telling you it makes me not want to watch it i see one more flag a flag filled game just it takes time away i understand all right protect the quarterback enough Enough. Well, this is Roger Goodell's NFL, and if you see him, the way he's acting and kind of ha head in the sand sort of thing, dude, it's it's. It, I mean, I love football, and like the sun Sunday for me is I just sit on my couch all day and watch football. I get it, but it's kind of tough. It's getting tougher to do that because the guy's such a friggin'. You're you're saying exactly. I'm there. Yeah, I'm there right here. now. See, yep. I I went to that. I I used to sit down and watch the games. Now it takes you so long. It's like it takes the momentum away. I just, if you touch the guy the wrong way, he push. it's not, a, and you can't even argue. I scream at my TV. I'm one of the screamers, dude. <laughs> I'm passionate and I have to do that. But I just, it's, they're pulling away everything. It's, it's just stop. Just if the guy, quarterback gets hurt, he gets hurt. There's a backup for a reason. That's it. Let the game breathe. Let it breathe, man. You know, one of the biggest problems, and it's across all sports, is we know too much now about how the sausage is made. <laughs> and people aren't comfortable with it. Like, you know, you talk about the old baseball. I grew up in that family. My, my uncle played in the major leagues. He coached wow. in the major leagues. Awesome. And look, they couldn't perform. And this is, this is open knowledge. I'm not telling anybody anything new. They couldn't perform without greenies. Like, it was every day. Like, you played a night game, and then you played a day game. You had to earn a coffee with the amphetamines in it. Like, that was the rocket juice, and that's what they did. And they've taken all that away. Of course. And the game's going to suffer. Of course it is. And But that's a fair trade-off. Like, if you care about how human beings live, that's a fair trade-off. But the game changed. Same thing in football with concussions. Same thing in hockey with the, all the stuff that's come out there. Same, same thing, thing in baseball, baseball with running into the catchers. It's all about preservation, but it makes 
the product that you and I grew up with. I mean, baseball. Carlton Fisk was my favorite player, oh, and he would Me? have a con. He would have somebody would run into him every day, and you see him now. You know, he's sixty something years old. Mm -hmm. He has trouble walking. Of course, he, you know his body has caught up to him. You look at those guys like Grogan in football with the neck. He's like Peyton Manning now. You know, all those. Th th it all catches up to him. And, and as educated fans, where you weren't back in the day when yeah. I was a little kid, you were just like, hey, who cares? Bring the next guy out. But as an educated fan now, it's a lot harder to kind of be like, oh, it's okay that he's laying on the field and he's not moving. They'll bring <laughs> another guy in. Yeah, I don't want that. I you know, want like, that. but that's that's where the... This is, the look, there's a happy medium there somewhere. Look, all I'm saying is let them play. You know, and remember this. Look, I, I, I equate it no way near what they these guys do. My back, I have a really, after 30 some odd years of playing on these horrible stages that we played on, I have some serious bad disc problem that if I don't get them checked and all that good stuff, these, and it's a Godfather line, it's a line from the Godfather, this is the life we've chosen, yeah. right? I don't want anybody hurt. I don't want concussions. I don't want any of that. But you know what? Now they're nitpicking. That's the problem. I mean, it's becoming to the point where you're you're taking the game away. The game that we all discovered, it's not that game anymore. All the games, all of them put together. It's just enough. And, it, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about money. It's oh, all yeah. about money. And well, that's that's <clears throat> what, you know, they're trying to, that's what Goodell's trying to do with all this, you know, yep. trying to protect the golden goose, basically. And they're doing such a horrible job of it because oh, yeah. those guys get to a point. I mean, the guy's making $44 million a year as a commissioner. <laughs> and you think that guy really has his has his head to yeah. the, his ear to the ground and understands what's going on? It's so transparent. It really and, and is. Every time something gets big, it always tumbles down. And what goes up must go down. Of course. I, I hate to see that with, with football, but you, you just never know sometimes either. I mean, hockey has been horrific to its fans they canceled the whole frigging season and even the last lockout was bitter and they're right now the nhl is having more success more money more yeah. tv rings more than they've ever had before right. so while you will be angry in the short term i think you know and, and certainly the the owners know this it's like ah well they're angry now but they're not gonna be angry later so it, it might work i mean look 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 at the nhl yeah but don't you think the N nhl has a great opportunity now well, yeah, yes. a great opportunity to be our t our our sport. I don't know that I like that though. Quite I, honestly, I, I get it as as a metal fan because I know where you're going with it. My band is going to get big. Oh my god, I get it. But something has to happen. I need to believe in something now because I can't believe in baseball. Football is going awry. I need hockey. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I need hockey to be that. And if it doesn't, where are we going? Where are we going? Are we going to soccer? Are we going football? European? I get yeah, it. IndyCar I, racing. <laughs> still a stretch. Still MMA. A stretch. <laughs> still a stretch. MMA. Yeah, well, that is true know. too. But I'm saying, where are we going, man? It's 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 become so much where I don't even want to bring my kid to a, a baseball game. You know what I mean? The, the American dream and all that. I don't care that these overpaid, bloated, fat millionaires. I don't care about any of them. Oh, you got hurt today. How about you limping on that goddamn base? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's just the way I feel about things. It's like you know what? Limp to first base and get on there because I paid my I paid my two hundred dollars to get this seat tonight. Get up there and do it. You know. So and baseball is not a hard sport to play. Quite God, honestly, I, mean, I, I played from five to eighteen, and I mean, I never got hurt doing dude, anything. I played baseball in high, in in high school. Fine. I, I was. I tried to be Greg Nettles. I I wasn't. It was it was between baseball and. And and music, so I chose music. I don't know what I would, would have done, you know. With but I was in college, I was in a high school baseball, but it was either or for me. But man, I, I don't think I would have ever made it. I don't think I would have made you know that jump because I see what they have to go through. But just to be what I mean, look at the Mets for God's sake. Look, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go there for God's sake. The, all right, you lost all this money in stocks. I get it, right? <laughs> I get it. I'm sorry, right? Yeah. I'm sorry that happened. But don't take it out on your fans. Don't take sell your team, sell your team. There's, there's buyers out there, right? And make New York big. I, I want to see the Mets do well. That's a nice stadium too. I mean, that's, it's a great, that's a really nice stadium. And that's another stadium I haven't been to, but it looks nice from a TV. It's uh, really the dark days of New York sports right around now. It's I the eighties. We're in the Jets the 80s. are horrible. The Giants, you never know. <laughs> Let's talk Ryan for a second. Let's talk, Ryan. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's talk, talk Ryan. Please. I was at the game last Sunday, by the way, the, the Jets-Denver game. And, <laughs> and Denver played horrible. That's the worst game I've seen them play. I'm a big Bronco fan. So, worst game I've seen them play. And the Jets still couldn't beat them. Let's, do you, so, do you go, think go. that part of that, though, look, again, this is a whole New England bias. I'm no, a former for season patri tickets patriot. Yeah, we know, we know your, your, your bias <laughs> yeah. out there. Frankie I doesn't hear it know. all the time. Frankie doesn't know my bias. But it's interesting. But... Uh, 
so no big fan of Rex, but right. he can game plan. And to me, watching that game, it seemed like he game planned right into Peyton's weaknesses. Well, a little bit, but look, I mean, that was the game. They're one in five now, and that was his right. job. Like, if yeah. those players were going to rally around him that and was play well, and, and they easily well, could have won. But they did rally around him to make it close. Well, they lost I mean, to Peyton, San Diego 35-0 the yeah, week before. You, you it there. looked horrible. Peyton had so many passes that he – I mean, something wrong with his arm. He couldn't yeah, make passes. I agree with that. They were all landing, like, like a couple feet short. I mean, the Broncos just played awful. It looked like he was sore. Right. It looked like he was sore. And I was sitting with all these Jet fans, and <laughs> I was I was kind of getting starting to get worried because I was giving them, like, like, I guarantee you this game's going to be within a touchdown in the third quarter. Like, yeah, you're crazy. And then it was close. I said, I said I'm nervous. They got, don't worry. It's just the Jets. They will lose. Like, we guarantee it. <laughs> and sure enough, they did. So and all, and at the end, they're like, you, you should, you got to trust us Jet fans. We know our team. <laughs> Not only did they lose, but they lost in jet fashion. It's so, <laughs> like it's they so kept it close, fashion. they kept it close, and then the game was over. And you're like, "Hey, well, here's a moral victory with a one touchdown game." And then they throw the he throws the interception, another pick six. I don't think any quarterback other than Geno Smith has thrown this many pick sixes so early in his career. He makes Mark Sanchez. <laughs> Look, you want him back. Look oh, <laughs> like the guy you should have had all along. By the way, I counted 33 Mark Sanchez jerseys at that game. He People was, were wearing those. I dude, guess. if there was no butt fumble, I know he would be their quarterback right now. He was, he was. Look, and as a Jet hater, he was a good quarterback for what they were going to do. USC he, man, West Coast. He was a backup quarterback at at best. At best, he's a backup quarterback. Look, you're in. And I hate to talk like the, the obligatory New Yorker. You're in New York. I'm not doing that. How about giving us a product? Give us a fucking... Sorry. Give us a product. Give us a product. I, there's nothing going on in New York. I'm tired of it. Well, see, here is where you might be wrong. Let's hear it. Give me something to Because the on. one team against all odds... Let's hear it. Here we go. ...that I think is going to be good this year. <laughs> the New York Islanders. Islanders. Yes. I went to uh, opening night out there. Boy, that place is... Uh, the mausoleum. Is what it is, yeah. <laughs> they still, uh, they're still playing there. Oh, yeah. They're and still they're, last, still, last season. they're still fighting to play there. Yeah. Like, the fans are like, I yeah. can't believe we're going to Brooklyn. Uh, I can't wait till they go to Brooklyn. But nonetheless, that that team is a surprisingly yeah. good team. Those two things, the two moves they made right at the end when they got Boychuk yeah. and uh, Nick Letty were... I, mean, Gar- I don't know, Gar Snow is not a good GM, but he somehow lucked into those two things. And those two guys make that team so much better. And then Brock Nelson, I don't know, where's yeah. out of his mind. I mean, they've got like three or four lines. They've got four good defensemen, and they have a relatively decent goaltender. Right. They actually, they could they can make some they noise. They could be I good. Think- <laughs> He's nodding no. I the, think- the Ranger fan next to me is not <laughs> happy about that. Well, you know what? This, you, you know what's funny? I'm a New Yorker. Not, I'm an Islander fan, not a Ranger fan. But how can any... I don't even want to say anything right now because I feel bad after last year. I was on the road when the Rangers did that whole debacle thing. I'm in New York. I lo- you hear that, dude? That's so cool. Um, I couldn't. I felt so bad, so bad last year, just to go through that. And there was no air. There was no air in the Rangers, and it, it bothered the hell out of me. This year, is there any air? I'm going to ask you that. I'm putting you on the spot right now. Is there any air? There's. There's not going to be any air this year. <laughs> Two, two things are going to happen. But uh, number one, let's go back to the Islanders. If I could just comment on that real <laughs> quick, feel Brian. free. That's feel why free. he baited you. <laughs> every <laughs> sing free. every single season, the Islanders start great and they go four games in, and everyone talks about how great the Islanders are going to look and how young and talented they are, and then they go one and seventeen in the month of January, he's right. he's and they right. go back. To, they go back to Islander Town. <laughs> I, 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 do, I I do agree with that, and they ha- that is their modus operandi, but. Johnny Boychuk is, I still can't believe the Bruins let him go. Even the guys on the team are pissed. I mean, I saw Lucic the other day. They're saying is, is it lo- tough losing him. He said it's really tough. Yeah. He was the heart and soul of that team along with Chara. So getting a guy like that, you don't get that every day. I think he's going to bring, he's bringing a, a different culture to the Islanders, Experience I think, this year. Yeah. 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 I mean, we'll see. I could be, they could do what you say, but we'll and see. I agree with you that going to Brooklyn is going to be the best thing that ever happened to that team. Oh, absolutely. Uh, fans may not see it yet, but they will see it because it's, no one wants to go there now. Well, at least there's something, you can have something to eat in Brooklyn. <laughs> I mean, the food <laughs> selections fat. there are horrible. Eat, eat, but you can't park. Well, yeah. You well, can't park there. Public transportation. Yeah, take the subway, <sighs> man. Yeah, well, Subways, trains, Ubers. Yeah. Well, we won't Ubers, talk about Uber. No, yeah. Let's not talk about Uber. Yeah. Oh, God. Frankie got in trouble with Uber. I, I'm in trouble with Uber. We're going to get over that, though. It's, yeah, absolutely. No more reports. 
Um, yeah, you know what? I want the Islanders to do what I look. I need something to look forward to. Look, we're in the 80s of Yankees. How bad they were all through the 80s, right? Yep. That's probably. where we are right now with the Yankees right now, right? And you know, I'm, a, I'm as, as far as NFL, I'm a Dallas fan who despises Romo. <laughs> Aha! Wow. That's, yeah, that's, not, that's not all that unusual. Look, I, uh, look, the bottom line is he's like the guy. He could bang the girl for hours. You know what? She still can't come. Right, she. <laughs> it's the, I get it. it I you get know what it. I mean? Because he will it. not finish, dude. He will not. I don't care. I've seen. Look, it's obvious what he's done in the past. Even now, you look in his eyes. These, yeah, the last couple of games. I don't care. I've seen it all. When it's prime time, yeah, they'll lose. You know, dude. Yeah, you know, you course. have to say that because this guy, you can look in his eyes and you say, no, mm -hmm. it's not there. It's not there. It's not that killer instinct. He doesn't have that. But I'm not sure what's going to happen this year in the NFL. I, I thought early on I was watching Seattle thinking, like, it's, they're just going to win it again. But I they, don't, they don't have it. They don't have it. And I forgot the statistic. I heard it today that only one team that went to the Super Bowl since 2002, I think, has won a playoff game next year. Only one. Wow. Which was kind of mind-boggling. Is it that much of a high carrying over? That you just you just you drink the Kool Aid and you're like you well know, the NFL stuff too because there's so many good teams that it really yeah. comes down to injuries like yeah, who has the least true. amount of injuries because yeah. probably ten teams that could win the Super Bowl is the teams that go through healthy that that win yeah yeah I mean there's parity and then you know it's the same thing when you were talking about Boychuk and, and and Letty like we've set up our sports now almost all of them that you can never ever have a dynasty again. Exactly. Um, you know, when you look at hockey and you're like, how could the Bruins get rid of Boychuk? Right. Like, that's mm -hmm. the way a salary cap league is supposed to work. Mm -hmm. Like, the Islanders haven't been good for a long time. They get the best players through the draft, and then if they manage their cap right, they pick. They're like vultures. They, they're carry-on. They pick right. off of everybody else when they all those good teams get up against the cap to try and win the cup. You know, you, your Kings are one of the few teams that have kind of managed the cap to the point where they're not going to be in salary cap hell for a long time. So it's a numbers game. It's a total numbers game. And, and sure. teams, teams, it's... It's managing a numbers game while managing you, the expectations of your fans. You want to put fans in the building, so you have to go for it. You know, you have to do things to make it happen. And sometimes you do those things to make it happen, and they come to roost two years later, and nobody sees it except for the guy who's going to the GM and says, "We have no flexibility. If yeah. somebody gets hurt, we're dead. You got to cut some. You got to cut some salary cap out of here. You got to get rid of a very painful." good player you got to make that very painful decision and now you got to go in front of the cameras and rationalize right. it while the fans are like he's our third best player and we just traded him for nothing right. for for a pair of picks and you know how do we do that the bruins have been trying to win for the last three years right. and they brought in a Ginla, they brought in all these guys and they put themselves in salary cap jail and they had to get out and the smart teams get out they take that short-term hit and they say Chicago did the same thing after they won the cup. Mm -hmm. The teams that really get in trouble in any salary cap league are the teams that fall in love with all their guys right. and think every year they can win and they go right up to the limit every year and they stay there. Like at some point you got to kind of trim all your all your aging limbs and let everything flower again. So that's how those guys ended up in in the island. I mean, Garth made some great moves, but he made them because other teams were <clears throat> desperate. By the way, you, you, you have to retract that statement. You cannot put in the same sentence, Garth Snow made some great moves. <laughs> some great you moves can't. Some great moves fell into Garth's lap, <laughs> Okay, and it go. was because <laughs> other teams became okay, there you go. desperate. Okay. That's yeah. much better. Oh, well much said. better. Thank yeah. you. You know, I miss the days where a team stuck, you know, stuck together and, and characters developed. I, there was something extra in the sports for me. I, I miss all of that. There's no... The thing is with with sports now, it's it's so I feel like everything's about money. It's mm -hmm. nothing about sports. There's nothing I can identify with at all. I agree. It's the, well, it's the agents. You know, the agents because yeah. I, I don't know that the athletes are particularly that way, but right. the agents are the ones that that, that run of up course. these prices. I mean, you look at baseball. Unfortunately, I live in Los Angeles, California. Well, not unfortunately because I love the weather there, but I live mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, California. The Angels right. are a disaster. They've signed Josh Hamilton for eight billion dollars, and he can't play. He just lost everything. And they lo signed Albert Pujols for eight million dollars, and he can't play. What happened there? And they signed well, CJ Wilson for eight million old, dollars. That's why. Yeah, and and CJ Wilson, <laughs> who is a metalhead and yeah. friends with some friends of mine, but all he all he does, he's a straight edge guy, so he doesn't drink or party. But he just plays video games like twenty four hours a day. It's like, dude, shouldn't you be like resting your arm and you know? I mean, you know, well, 
practicing or something? Dude, they play video good. games with your friends for like two days straight. That's good hand-eye coordination, right? Yeah, there. it does. It gets the ball. You see the ball better like that if you really play video games. But there's a the problem. You get an owner like Artie Moreno with, right. with the Angels, and he goes after these big ticket signings. And what it, what is in it for those guys? They they have so, they're at the end of their career mm -hmm. more or less. They're getting paid thirty million dollars a year. They don't have they don't have to do anything. Look at A. Rod. Dude, I have uh, I can't wait because the Yankees it's such, such to look forward to the next year. A Rod's coming back! Yay! A Rod's <laughs> coming back! Isn't everybody excited? I couldn't stand the day they signed the, the day they talked about. Well, Mike Lupica talked about the possibility of him coming to the Yankees. I was sickened by the. Th I despise everything A Rod is about. Yep. Everything he stands for is not baseball. It's not anything. Anything I want to do, he's everything I hate about sports. Quite honestly, and I know it's everybody said it. It's, it's the, he's the poster boy. Yeah, you know why he's the poster boy? Because he's a sellout. He's a sellout. The bottom line is he is who he is, and they know it now. Look at look at how he plays now. I'm I'm a Yankee fan. He was never. I'll say it right now. He was never a Yankee. He never was. I don't care that they they gave him a a, a World Series. Who cares about that World Series? As a Yankee fan. I don't even want that World Series. They can, I, I oh, I like that. I like what I, you're saying. I throw, the, I throw that World Series away because he was on the team. How about that? See, I, I have a lot of friends who are Yankee fans. And Yankee fans, one thing I notice about Yankee fans is they are they are very passionate fans, more passionate than a lot of players, a lot of teams' fans are. But I get into these arguments with them because they kind of are, I mean, they don't like A-Rod. Nobody will admit that they like A-Rod, but they always go, yeah, but he, he was great that one year we won the title. I, I, I contend that if he wasn't here, they probably won two or three more. They could have had like real heart and soul guys in there. You could use that to, money, that overpaid, bloated salary yep. ugh, to get real players that are hungry and want to play the game for the game and not about being a poser that... He's like, he should just have big hair. He's he's like in the eighties. You know what I'm saying? He's out. He's not even about the song. He's about he's about posing. It's everything that is wrong with sports. It, and I'm just not just saying. There's a lot of guys like him now. It was when I saw him come to New York, and they and they signed him. God, they signed them. How do you sign a guy like A Rod? So and now we have the fun of going through all this this nonsense that we went through already, and they're gonna call him back. He's allowed to play. I don't want. Uh, come on, you think I, I haven't gone to Yankee Stadium? Do you think I'm going to go to Yankee Stadium now? <laughs> Is that a big draw? You don't want to see a train wreck? God Almighty! I have to say something about the character of Jared, Derek Jeter, though. The first time I'm going to name drop for a second here. The first time I've ever met, I met Jeter one time in my life. It was at a club here in downtown New York City, and believe it or not, you're not going to believe who introduced me. Uh, you know Mariah Carey? Well, you know Mariah Carey is. Who? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was back, never heard of her. back in those days. Broadway a, star, right? A, she's a Broadway star. <laughs> back in those days, I was friends with Mariah. I haven't seen her in a while. But long story short, so we're at the club. She sees me. She goes, "Come over." And she was dating him at the time. That's right. I remember John Bush was friends John with her. John Bush, as well. and she That's was there. Right. That's right. We went to hang with her in That's, Japan. I completely forgot about that. It was a crazy time, and she calls me over, and, and she goes, "She goes, want to want to meet Derek?" I, I didn't even hear her. She just, I just put my hand out to Derek immediately. I kind of ignored her. <laughs> I kind of, because I just asked him about everything. And the first thing Derek said to me was, because I said to him, dude, I love what you did for New York. You're, you're the guy, all this stuff, and I'm a fan guy and all that. So he goes, yeah, but dude, now they got to pay me. Now they got to pay me some dough. Because he wasn't getting minimal, uh, minimal money yeah, at that yeah. time. But they were giving him, I remember, remember it was negotiation time. And he goes, yeah, but they got, he got real. He's like, yeah, but they got to pay me, man. Come on, I got to get something out of this. And he was very real. It was a very, very real conversation. The guy couldn't have been sweeter. And uh, so I was happy to see him go where he went. Well, I know. I've heard he's a nice guy. I mean, you hear he gives like nice gift baskets the night after he's with a woman. And, you know, there's so nice do, things like that. And so do I. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my wife would love to hear that. I but have a question. <laughs> yes. Mariah Carey, where's that relationship? Um, we were in a recording studio, and this is honest. We were in a recording studio. Um, I, the person she was working with, I guess, knew the band. I made the, She made the introduction to me, to her, and we became friends. Good ball busting going on. All that fun stuff. But she's she was really cool. She was genuinely cool. And uh, she wasn't into metal or anything, but she was just a fun, ball-busting Long Island chick. Yeah, and she was, I think, around that time, she was kind of, that was the transition of, you know, she'd been, she'd kind of started to get popular. Yeah. She was, you know, kind of Matola's girl. Totally. And Matola things. was in the, in, in the studio, too, so you <laughs> had to be careful. Yeah, and I know, because, you know, I completely forgot when you mentioned that. I go, that's right, because I remember Bush was talking to her Absolutely. As, well, as well. Whoa, something fell off. Something's falling apart here. <laughs> um, and... Uh, 
and he was he would call me up and and like t- tell because she was asking like questions about the industry and stuff. So yeah. he'd call up and say like, "Hey, what do you think about this?" And I completely forgot that he yeah, he was friends with her. Wow, I, that's crazy. Yeah, John Bush. I haven't seen him. Say hello. I haven't seen him in a, forever. I love him. I love him. I love John. By the way, John Bush. If you don't know who John Bush, John, John Bush is oh. the singer of Armored Saint. He's also a singer from Anthrax for a while. One of the greatest metal voices of all time. Absolutely. And now. Uh, he is a fanatical Los Angeles Kings fan. Him and his what? wife have season tickets. I did not know Their this. six-year-old son plays on the L.A. Junior Kings. Awesome. I love uh, that. Very he's cool. very small, but he's really good. So, yeah, he's a big, big-time big hockey man, guy He's now. got speed. That's all we need. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's really it, man. Good he's for good. him, man. Yeah, and he's playing with uh, the same team that uh, I think it's Dustin Brown's kid and uh, one of the other Kings' awesome, kids are man. on that team. That. Do, you, uh, that, do you know which one of the former Kings is the coach? Because every one of their teams has a former I, NHL or as a coach. I don't know yet, but they play down. I, I live right down the street yeah, they, they play, play at the it. Toyota. And, yeah, in El, in El Segundo. So <laughs> but cool. I told him, I said, let me know when they're playing. Sure, and then he called me back and said, they're playing at 8 a.m. tomorrow. I'm like, I'm not going. I'm not getting up at 8 a.m. to go see him. 8 a.m. Just stay up. <laughs> yeah, really, no. just stay up. <laughs> nah, it's going to happen. <laughs> One night out, Brian. It'll be fun. Yeah. We'll have a good time. <laughs> That's it, man. No, just go straight to it. I, yeah, John's Dude, John's we could go to you could go to the place we hung out at when we were in Hermosa. Stay out there till they, like they, four. They close. The, you got to remember in LA, everything closes at two. Two, and it's not, what last calls at one thirty. Yeah. So the yeah, dinner, yeah. the place we stay at, uh, the Barnacle. Was that the name of it? This is the Barnacle. Yeah, they, they stayed uh, open a little later. I think that they probably broke some rules that yeah. night, but but not but not. not just well, we had forty five people two, in there. Yeah, it might have been two thirty. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then that's it. You can get in big trouble over there. You know, it's a di- different game, a little different than here, but you get in trouble here too. Nobody ever gets in trouble in New York. Well, until we miss our train, right? Exactly. Well, yeah. If you miss your train, then it's yeah. then it's then it's then it's rough. Yeah, but you got to negotiate. Well, we were talking about it before. We we negotiate with taxi drivers about a hundred dollar taxi ride home. You know, that, that's a whole different story. But <laughs> go ahead. Negotiate. Negotiate. You try to get it down to sixty to seventy, but it's usually does it ever work? So occasionally, no. you get a guy that's you, desperate that's going to make desperate. his rent, man. He's got to be desperate. And he's like, oh, seventy bucks, I'll do it. Yeah, it's seventy like, bucks is a good hit. Well, interesting. It's like Moscow. You do the same thing in Moscow. The, yeah. the cabs there, all these these gypsy cabs, and you just get to work with them on the you, money. You just keep walking away, <laughs> and then the guy will always take ten bucks off. You're like, okay, I can't do it. He's like, I'll do it for ninety. I'm like, no. It's like the car and salesman thing. Sure, you got to get him as far down as you can, and then when you know you got him where you want him, you're like, all right, I'll take the hit. I got to yeah. get home. You got to get home. After a while, you just want to get home. You, you do know? not want to stay in Penn you know, Station. The last time an Uber. And besides the trouble I had, but the last time an Uber, I was, I was, you know, my phone. And so I had a, I had a gig, I had a clinic down here, and it was like two in the morning. Uh, gig was closing up, so I'm standing outside. It's like 41st Street, something like that, in Broadway, and I'm Ubering my car to go home. Right, I Uber it, man, and it's just about to go through, and my damn phone dies. Oh, do you know how many people won't let you use their plug in Manhattan if you need your phone to work? Oh wow. Nobody, dude. Nobody. Every restaurant, no plug, no plug. You know, everybody saying no. Nobody. All of a sudden, nobody has a damn plug in Manhattan. Nobody in Manhattan. Every every damn freaking store. Uh, I'm a fellow New Yorker. You think this is a little pull? Nothing. J- Jim Florentine does a great a great bit about that about his, his phone and like he he, said he has a phone on stage. He said I'm not I don't have my phone up here for any other reason other than I need a charge. I'm constantly looking for a charge. He said when I walk in to a room now the first thing I do is look for an outlet, an open outlet. It's pathetic. It's, it's all it is now, man. I got the damn six after that five that five garbage. My battery was actually dying and I had to get the six. The six is just as sucky as the five. So it's the same thing. What's the difference? We use these. We it's rely bigger. on these damn phones. Yeah, it's a lot of. Bigger nonsense. Well, you know, you know, we're well, all three of us are, are old school enough. I mean, I remember yeah. long ago when you didn't have cell phones or yeah. any, any of this nonsense. I remember when we had fax machines. Yeah. But now, if if you don't have your phone, you, I left my phone at my mom's house one day. And I wasn't sure what happened to it. I just mm. got in my car. I was driving, and I was like, I don't have my phone. I had a complete, <laughs> absolute panic. <laughs> And freaking out, I was I like, get "Well, maybe it fell out at, at the restaurant." So I went to the restaurant, like, like retracing my steps, and I finally went back to my mom's house and fallen into the chair I was sitting in. But I was like, "Oh!" But I was literally was having a panic attack. I totally understand. You know, I was at I home. I hate that. Yesterday, you, you're gonna laugh at this, man. Yesterday, I was at Home Depot trying to find the damn water filter for my fixer upper house. Long story short, I'm so pissed about everything. Um, I so I get I look for the I'm looking for water filters from my house and I put the phone down with the pamphlet. I'm checking out. I pick up the box. I bring the box to get the, the freaking to to pay for it. All of a sudden, guess what? The iPhone new iPhone seven hundred dollars six is not in my hand anymore. It's back at the end of the store, <laughs> where I when I was looking at it. I'm in a 
Talk, talk about panic, dude. How fast did you run? I was the fastest guy <laughs> you've ever... I'm telling you, dude, there was fire on my ass. I'm not even kidding. I was flying. And thank... I, I literally... I dove on the phone. <laughs> it was like slow motion. I dove on the phone. God forbid... I would have been in jail for death if somebody would have touched that phone because that's what goes on with... The, that's how we... We rely on these things so much that you... You'd almost kill for these damn things because they have your life in it, and that's a problem. Oh, it's a serious problem. Dude. I agree. I, I when I when I had that panic attack, I got eyes. Oh, this is not right. It's not healthy. I don't like this. I don't no. feel this is good. But it's gonna kill us. It's, it it's not. Look, anxiety, heart attack. We're getting to that age. That's what happens. Well, the other thing too that drives me. I was talking with a bunch of people about this the other day. It's like we have all this technology now. More technology, all, emails and faxes, and you get, it's, everything is your phone, and yet everybody's busier than you've ever been. <sighs> How shouldn't all this stuff make our lives easier and better? But no, it, it doesn't. It does. It's it, the opposite. It, it because makes you, you can never shut it off. Exactly. Like I can never. Exactly. I and mean, you're probably the same way. Like yeah. you know, I do a regular shift in the office, and then I come home, and at eight o'clock, if somebody gets hurt or something, and I got to update the site, yeah. you know, all of a sudden I'm back on call. It doesn't matter what my kids are doing. It doesn't matter what, like what my wife's doing. I'm like, hey, listen, you know, Sidney Crosby just got hurt in Pittsburgh. I got to yeah. deal with this. Like back in the day, you don't answer your phone. Like I, my, <laughs> I'll tell you funny. My wife used to, well, she was a photographer, and they would uh, call up you know back in the day and they'd be like hey can you shoot an accident whatever she was a newspaper photographer and there was one guy on her staff and whenever they called him up he'd be like i would love to but uh you know i have a friend over his name's jack and we've been at it all night like he would just whether he was drunk or not he would just say i've been drinking jack daniels all night i can't go out and shoot that and what are you gonna do like but now you can't do that now they hand you that phone it's like an electronic ankle mm -hmm. bracelet. It's, you're it, you're done. It's a ruthless society that it's 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 desperate. It's what it is. It's a desperate society, and you look at the fanfare and all these paparazzi nonsense idiots out in L.A. and New York. It's when I see them surrounding uh, whatever. Who's the one of the biggest stars in L.A.? When, the last time I was there was that Kardashian chick. Yeah, hilarious. Big, big, I guess. It was hilarious, dude. You, dude, dude. It looked like the president was coming through. Really, Kardashian? It doesn't even matter. Uh, I don't. I don't know the girl. I don't care about the girl. But what, really, that that's what's that's what's important now. It, it, it goes into that. It's like every everything. It's all one now. It's like, what are you doing? Slow down. I, what I'm saying is with this phone thing is, I wish we could take a step back. I really do because I think it's it's too desperate. What's going on now? Well, it's crazy. Like, uh, 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 there's this great restaurant in Los Angeles called Crossroads. It's a vegan restaurant, actually, run by a chef who's a huge heavy metal fan, of course. Many of these chefs are. And I went to the first time I went to the restaurant. It's in it's in Hollywood. It's on Melrose. There was like five paparazzi people just standing out in front. I guess because some celebrities go in. So some they were waiting for you. No, yeah, there you go. <laughs> they. <laughs> But there's somebody came in, some blonde woman who I vaguely looked familiar, got out of her car, and there's like all of a sudden there's like five people in front of her taking pictures and videotaping everything. So it's crazy. In this Hollywood, you know, they take pictures of people who audition. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> it's not even real anymore. It's like she might be a star. Let's get in on it now. Yeah. yeah. You pathetic, desperate piece of shit. I the whole society makes me crazy. It makes me more angry than I thought I was. But I have no tolerance for it all at all anymore. When I see it. I hate the, the TV that I have to see these channels. If I have to wait a second and, God forbid, one of those channels come on and they have those paparazzi shows on, I get sick into my stomach. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It, it's, it's bad. The whole thing's got to stop. The only good thing about it is we get to have sports like scores when we want it. I think that was cool. Because my, my wife, we were watching some Walking Dead last night and the Royals won, won last night. Yep. So I just want to keep up with that. So I went to my phone, and that was cool. That's one of the cool things about well, it. Well, but it's a double-edged sword there, quite honestly, mm -hmm. because I live, again, I live in Los Angeles, and the friggin' hockey games and everything come on at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I can't be home at 4 o'clock in the crazy. afternoon. That's so I'm taping everything, and then I can't look at social media. <laughs> I can't have some, like, sometimes yeah. my friends have texted me, whoa, did you see that goal? I'm like, wait, I'm taping the game, don't tell me. <laughs> don't that's tell me that's who, the bad part of it. There. Don't tell me what team if did. If anybody oh, could yeah. ever, you know, they talk about self-made millionaires and technology and everything. If somebody could figure out a filter... That you could put on your phone, yeah. To that you could still do your business, but it would block whatever you wanted blocked. You don't want to know who won I, the hockey game. I need that on my TV too, because if I'm watching another game, if yeah. I'm taping something, yes. watching it, I have to like, and the score starts coming. I have to like put the remote up to block <laughs> the score so I don't see what it is. Ah, that's. But could you better. imagine if you could get a filter? There's your new app. That'd Dude, be great. Yeah, there you go. Right there, it's a brand new app, and Apple TV should come up with that. That'd be perfect. That all of that is. 
that's going to happen. Go run to the patent office right they, now. That's going to happen. Quick. That totally makes sense. So, so you're talking about the Royals. So you, you earlier w were talking before we started this thing that you are like all Mr. Royal now, right? Well, just because... Because um, of Lord? So what? <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Lord uh, or how you pronounce it? My thing is, I want, I want the basics back. Ro Royals, there's no money there. I, you know, there's, there's George Brett, who I... Lo Look, I'm a Yankee. If I was at the t Pine Tar game. I was literally. Oh, really? Wow. I was at the Pine Tar game. <laughs> so awesome. So I remember um, being with my Uncle Joe. We went to the game. I remember him freaking the hell out. It was, it was the best, man, to see it live. And then having a, a game so famous in history. Uh, I remember him freaking out. I knew exactly what they're doing. It was hilarious, man. It was a bullshit line. Come on, obviously. Yeah. But the way he freaked on that, I love the passion. But um, I want to see the Royals go for it because I think MLB needs a kick in the ass well yeah i i, I mean i don't know kansas city it's hard for me to root for anything in kansas city but it, it doesn't matter it could be anybody it could be i wish it was the pittsburgh small pirates team yeah i wish it was the pittsburgh pirates right sure. e either or oakland A's. i mean look i i, right. I, I love the A's for many reasons because they have a lot of metalheads on there totally i agree with uh, that man i'm and, in and by the way sean doolittle who's their closer who is an all-star this year is going to be on this show on this show sometime awesome. in the next couple months so. awesome man um but yeah, it's cool. I like that stuff. But I also kind of like the Gi Giants are Bay Area. Me They're too. a metal metal team, Metallica dudes. Yeah, are I was in, just in San Francisco last year, last week um, for that clinic thing, uh, EMG. That's a plug. Um, and I tell you, the vibe there was incredible. It was, oh, yeah. it was the first game. It was incredible. It was they took it on, man. It was people, you know, with the stadium all the way on the other side now. It, it, it's incredible the vibe, and I love that vibe of it. It doesn't seem like it's so. Maybe maybe there is I don't know but it doesn't seem like there's so much about money there right It's a little bit less I mean it's a, it's there's two teams it's it's a big market but it's not a crazy big market yeah. so it's not like I mean even though you know Silicon Valley is not too far away even the yeah. Sharks you you don't get the feeling that that it's just a bunch of rich people going to these games yeah. you know even though it, it clearly could be well, of course they could buy the way in of course but and I, they're, they're nobody's jaded right? yeah exactly right see right now look maybe I'm look I'm a 49 year old man. Uh, been through the whole Yankee thing, you know. My thing is, I remember. Maybe, I, maybe I'm just too old for the sport. What's going on now? And maybe I'm not. Maybe I just like purity. I see. How, I mean, look, I, I I totally see how you can get turned off of this stuff because you've got these guys making so much money when they're not out there performing. It, it's just ridiculous. You you want to hate them even more. And then you know, Josh Hamilton put his f foot in his mouth the other day and said, "Well, we, <laughs> you know, we I don't really we we don't really play for the fans. We we play for the guys in the room." It's like, are you really that stupid? Did he say that? That's he what I'm absolutely saying. Absolutely said he that. He said those words, yeah, which said is those words. The fans and who is putting the money in your pocket? It's just like the fans exactly. music. Who's putting in the money in your pocket? Are you out of your mind? You know what? what maybe who knows what's in his mind? But again, a guy who's fallen off. Right? Yeah. Another guy who's fallen off, Pulos, another guy who's fallen off. What happened? What happened? And the big money, man, you get comfortable, you get complacent. You're living, uh, living in Southern California at the beach. Dude, it's all good. Your gut it's gets nice. big. You know what? Yeah. Go play. How about do some, do some laps and get in that damn batting cage, <laughs> exactly. you, you fat bastard. That's the way I look at it. I don't care. Let's, let's go at it. Let's, let's go at it. I'm ready. Let's do it. I'm done with this stuff. I want I want my sports back because I'm a passionate guy. I want to I want to live the game now. I, I don't live these damn games anymore, and I can't pass it on to my eight year old son. I, I, no, I'm not doing it. I you, even if the teams were good, do you think it's because they're not good, or it, it's just the no, fundamental? It's a of fundamental what's thing. You know what it is? It's about uh, them pricing us out, man, and then pricing uh, the 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 little guy. We built all this, right? I, I, I'm a blue collar guy. We built this thing. And you know what? And now the lawyers, the doctors, they get first run. You know what? F you. That's the way I feel about it. It's like, no way. You know, I, you could take your game. I'm going to go somewhere else now. I'm going to put my time and money somewhere else. How about that? And you lose your blue collar. And you're, you know what happens? Your cushioned seats in Yankee Stadium, they continue to be empty. And I love it. I love watching on a whatever channel, Yes Network, whatever. I love watching those cushion seats open every night because that doctor, that lawyer couldn't make it that night and he couldn't even give his, his seats away to anybody because nobody would take them because your, your team is so pathetic. That's what I feel. I'm so, I'm so jaded with this. That's just the truth, man. That's a New York fan talking. That's, that's reality in New York right now. Sorry. And, mm -hmm. and nobody knows the long-term damage of that. Like, you're not introducing the game to your kid. No, I'm not. I'm not introducing the game to my son. I'm introducing like piano to my kid. That's what a piano. I'm introducing piano and music and metal and, and the good, rich stuff that I think will help him through life. It's not something that's 
it's on money. It's not. It's not all about if who is the highest player that can come in and, and make something out of nothing. And meanwhile, we have the highest players and we can't do anything. Yuck! It's just disgusting. It's everything. But it's not supposed to be. It's not fundamentally good for anybody. It's just boring. And it, you know this. You know what's great. I understand why kids go to video games. Mm -hmm. I understand it, dude, because you can't go anywhere with this if you look at it. In reality, yep. I, I get it now. I, I never did get it, but now I get it. You know. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I love the fact that you're so angry because that means there's going to be a really good Anthrax record dude, coming out. I think. I was thinking as <laughs> as we're sitting here, I'm like, when they get ready to do their next album, oh, we're ready. They're doing it now. We're you ready. should just play this podcast a couple of times. <laughs> you will have so many songs. Like they, uh, just think about all the things that you've you've riffed about. Like you could write a song for every one of these, and it would be an awesome, yeah. awesome album. Just put a picture of A Rod right in front of him when he's playing. <laughs> them. Dude, you know, it's great having Scotty in as a fellow Yankee oh, Yankee yeah. guy with me, and Charlie. You know, he's a New Yorker too. So it, the three of us write the song. So it's kind of great having that anger in the Anthrax thing. I don't think we have any any problem with the anger. In fact, I I I can't wait to people. Everybody sells their record, but dude, this is an angry band. <laughs> Which is so great. This fuel, this fuel in that belly right there. I mean, this fire. I can't wait. I'm very impressed with what we're doing, just because it's it's hard to play. <laughs> That's what oh, good. It's, it's hard to play, and I'm and I, I genuinely think, I I think we found a niche. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you know, it's it's very rare these days that that a band that's been around for as long as you guys have been to put out a record like the last one you guys did, Worship Music, where it's arguably in you know one of your best top two or three records of, Thanks, all, of all time man that's really amazing and i mean how did i mean how did that all come about where all of a sudden you just everybody was on the same page and it just worked i mean is there any rhyme or reason to it really coming from you first i have to say coming from you we've been friends forever and just because i respect you so much and because i think you have a you have a good barometer of what goes on in the metal world i really i really you know i feel that Thank about you. you i've always Thank felt you. that about you and I appreciate you saying that. Um, I think Anthrax um, knows this works. The, the three of us um, with Joey, Joey works at, at Anthrax. We have John Bush, and it felt like another band. Yep. Another great, fun band that we had. But this thing also works, but this is a different way. Like we write with Joey's vocals, you know, and we have the heavy music, but you also have to make room for those vocals because he can do different things with his stuff. And, and I, I enjoy that we had two different bands. I really do. But I think with this band, I think there's a niche that we found um, in, in the songwriting process. This is something we know that works. Um, and yeah, we digest this stuff. We, we pick it apart. I mean, not, that's what we're in right now. We're pretty much picking it apart. I go again Friday, L.A., Scott and Charlie together with us, with me, and uh, we, we'll pick it apart with Jay Rustin. I like that. I like the editing because it shows that we care, and, and you, we got to sit on the songs. You can't just put it out, man. Yeah. You, you really have to sit on it and live it. If you don't live it and say, this part needs to go, I mean, we'll, we all have notes now. You know what I mean? Uh, I think we know what we're doing at this point, and thank God for the big four, and I, I, I got to give credit to the Metallica guys. God bless them, man. I love them. You know, we've been friends forever, but they didn't have to put bring us out, dude. They didn't have to make that happen. And I think they gave Anthrax another shot, and that's as honest as I can be. And I, I, I love them and thank them forever on it. And you really have to be honest with that kind of thing. Uh, these guys gave us another shot by putting on the, us on that thing. We, we, we weren't together at that time. We weren't really what we should have been, and I think that gave us a kick in the ass. And um, I say to Lars and, uh, and James and, and Kirk when I talk to them, thank you. Just thank you for bringing this out because I know how important that was. They introduced us to a whole different fan base that actually got it. They got it. And th thankfully, we came out with worship music. It was the perfect storm. It really was. And it all worked nicely. And it gave us, look, it gave us a career back. And that's the way, that's as honest as I can be and sincere as I can be. Uh, I couldn't be more um, humbled. And, and I feel very fortunate. And all I want to do is make sure this record is exactly what it's supposed to be. And I think we, I, I think the fans deserve that. I think we deserve that. I think metal deserves that. And I, I wanna, I think we have a shot. You know, I think we have a shot to make a, make a mark right now um, because we've been through a lot. Absolutely. And I, I think there's a, a, a serious hunger in this band that we know where we have to go. And I love that fire that we have in our belly. It's, it, it's really energizing, it really is. That's where we are right now. So it's all good, man. I'm, I'm psyched for the future. 
I don't know about anybody else, but I'm going to go pre-order the album right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and it may sound like a pitch, but I, I feel I'm I'm genuinely passionate. No, about and it, I know? was being genuinely yeah, passionate I too. I mean, it's you. when when you hear that, yeah. Like yeah. it's not somebody going through the motions. It's not like I got to put that new album out and here it is. It's yeah. I can't this go is the, this is my livelihood. This is yeah, this who is, I am. This is how I feed my family. I can't go, Brian. You know me, man. I cannot go through the motions. I would quit tomorrow. It doesn't matter to me. If I don't live this stuff on stage, I can't do this, man. That's the bottom line. We have to live every moment in in the music, um, and that. It means everything to me. It, it's all about what we do and what we put out there. So it's very, very important. Yeah, see, I mean, that that's ultimately why things do well, because you care. If you care and you really want to craft it right, then you make it right. So yeah. there you go. You know, that's that's a bigger problem with America right now. I want to mm -hmm. see people care more and make it rise, because I, I love America. I want to see it rise. Everything should be like that. That's getting there. It depends. It will. I will. I agree with that. I, yeah. It is getting there. So, so what are the, the so when do you think the record? You guys are starting to work on it now. I, no, we, I, we're deep into we, we're deep into it. We have <clears throat> six, 15, 16 songs. So, right when now. do you think it'll be finished, dude? We would love to have it out in the summer. Yeah, of course. Love to have it out in the summer festivals, all that yep, good stuff. Yep. We'll hang out in the in the dressing room as, as usual, of course, absolutely, <laughs> and sweat our asses off. Um, yeah, that's that's the plan. I mean, um, I think it's going to be out in the summer. I think we we're sitting on it. We're doing the right thing, living the songs and. Um, Friday's Friday next Friday will tell a lot from the songs we're working on. Uh, I I want to start recording end of no, end of November early December. I I want to and I think we'll talk about that on Friday. But I can't wait to play. I really can't wait to play. You know, cool cool good to go. Well, we could talk all night, but uh, we, don't, we don't want to bore everybody. We got a night, curfew. Right? So, wait, is it, yeah, there's a curfew. Is it? So uh, <laughs> well, yeah, not really. Uh, <laughs> So we always play a couple of songs at the end of these things for the two uh, radio stations that play the show. So, uh, I mean, I feel we have to play an Anthrax song, obviously. Cool. Uh, you have any favorites? I do. Just from Worship, we've been on that record. Um, you know, I heard this the, the recording of it the first time in a long time the other night, uh, In the End. Yes. I, I Amazing just, song. I, I, thank you. I just, I, I got so into it listening because I, I, I thought about what it was about and what we're, how we got there. I, it's just, it's one of my favorite Anthrax songs. It's a great song. Sean, Thank you got you got a song to pick out? Doesn't have to be anthrax, it can be anything you yeah. want. Uh -huh. Um You know we do this every month and you're never I do and I, never prepared. It's not that I'm never, <laughs> never prepared. prepared. It you know what it is? It's two things. One, I'm never good when I'm put on the spot. <laughs> and two do, 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 look, do look. a little bit of work before you get no, here no, and have no. like something in your back pocket. That's not that's not it. The other thing is Every time we do this, I'm sitting with you and usually somebody else like Frank. There's a lot of pressure in this. Now, if we were picking old hockey themes or whatever, <laughs> I could do that. It's music. There's a there's an intimidation factor here. I feel like I'm in against Randy Johnson right now. Yeah, but so, but you know, you're a music guy. Come on, you're a you could guy. do it. Just you know what? Come from the heart, man. You're I'll give you a minute. I will. I will now. Just, I'm going to play an Anthrax song as well. I'm going to play my what probably my favorite old Anthrax songs. Cool. Caught in a mosh. Wow, cool. Among the living cool. and caught in a mosh, I go back and forth, but I love that song. Cool. It's fun. Thanks, man. All right, so... No pressure. No so now you're no really pressure. on the spot because there's <laughs> only one left now, so... There, there's no pressure. I'm going to go in a different direction. Okay, please do. It. And I'm going to go... There's a lot of nice things said about Metallica today, so we'll yes. go in a whole big four direction. Go sure. And uh, we'll do a little... Uh, a whiplash. Oh, there you go. Sounds nice. good. So uh, you are on the social media networks. I am. At the Frank Bellow on Twitter. Are you on Instagram yet? I am. The Frank Bellow. See, the Frank it's Bellow. And of course, it. you can go to anthrax.com to get all of the information. Of course, Anthrax is also on Twitter at Anthrax. Yes. Thank I'm you surprised you guys got that, actually. You know what? I am too. I probably have to pay somebody. Yeah. But uh, my thing is, I'm still getting into it. You're great at it, obviously. But. Um, and I I actually love your tweets. I I find it, it refreshes what I need to know. It, I think you have a lot of knowledge which I need to know. It's fun. It's fun. To, it's fun to do. I like to interact with people. And so plus, cool. when you're at the games, dude, it's hilarious. It's you usually it's play by play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the play by play, dude, because we don't have those games. Yeah, exactly. And I love the play by play. I think it's, it's important. Fun. It really is. Thank you for that. Cool. Well, you can follow me at Twitter and Instagram at Brian Slagle and then Sean, you have to tell yours because there's underscores and all sorts of things going on <laughs> in his Twitter handle. It's S Rourke underscore NHL. That underscore is the worst. <laughs> and you're still not on Instagram. No, man. What is the deal with no Instagram? Exactly. Yeah, no, my wife is the photographer. 
we'll leave it at that. Right, fair enough. You don't want to see my pictures, man. Huh? Hey, fair enough. You know, so you're, you're lost. The, everybody else is lost. They all go on Twitter. <coughs> well, dude, uh, thanks, Frank, for doing this. Right, thanks you for having me. Yeah, awesome. This is great. Have fun, man. I, I, I'm sorry for the passion. Oh yeah, never, yeah, please, never please apologize. Be sorry that. Yeah, right. never but apologize. I'm sorry, I come off a little hard on the sport thing. I love but, um, it. That's where I live. It's because you I love, love it. it. Yeah. That's where I live, man. But thanks if for you having did, me, guys. If you didn't it love it, awesome. you wouldn't care. So. I, exactly. But thanks for having me. Yeah, that was so awesome, man. So thanks again, and we will see you guys next month. Ba-doom.